Good morning, everyone. It's March the 18th, and it's time to get out of bed. Now. Yeah, it was okay, I guess. Okay, so if you remember from last time, we're trying to impress a scout so we can gain access to the yellow head building, and to impress the scout, we need to beat up some people. And we've already beaten up some people, but he wants us to beat up some other people, and he's given us photos of those people so we can find them and beat them up. But we don't know where they are, so let's ask around. Whoa, slow down, Rio! <laughs> A whole dollar! You don't want to be too generous now, do you? Jeez, don't go spending it all at once, homeless man! So, we can ask around at the places where the street fights are held. So let's ask this man. Okay, so we know that Greg is over at the Blue Dragon Garden by the uh, stand quarter. And uh, we spoke to Cool Z and we know where Chun Yan is. We've got one more person to find. Uh, there's Joy's red motorcycle, so I guess she's hanging out here somewhere. Where are you? Oh, there you are. You're still loading in. Joy. なんだ。この男を知らないか。そいつなら須桜をでストリートファイトやってるよ。本当か?なあ、間違いないよ。言ってみな。ヤムチャロウから行けるよ。ヤムチャロウへは。あっちだよ。白線街をずっと行って案件
Okay, so I pointed out this guy in an earlier video, but basically this is the Lucky Hit Museum, which is basically a, a circle of different Lucky Hit boards with different rules and different layouts. Sort of arranged into a weird Stonehenge-like formation, and the guy who runs the Lucky Hit stand is just has just placed himself in the middle of it all as some kind of weird worshipping gesture for the for the Lucky Hit gods. But yes, um, you can play Lucky Hit here, and every, each of the boards has different rules and different odds, and we can try this one, which is interesting. Because if we win, we get $500, and it only costs a dollar to enter. Alright, let's give it a shot. One dollar for five hundred dollars. As our good friend Hassan has explained to us, we need to we have three chances and we have to get the ball into the goal all three times in order to win. Oh hey, actually got it in. This might not be so bad after all. Just gotta get it in another two times and we'll be $500 richer. Well, so much for that! Uh, I guess it wasn't gonna be that easy. I really want the $500 though. Well, let's see. Any other lucky hit boards? You get $120 on this one. Cost $10. How does this work? Mm, so this one's best two out of three. I think I'll pass. Yeah, I was never really good at lucky hit. Not that it's really any skill involved, it's mostly just luck. Well, I've decided to earn my $500 another way. Through <laughs> arm wrestling. Because if there's one thing that I'm okay at, it's button mashing. So. Um, this is the arm wrestling area. The guys on the right side of the area, starting from this man. Well, this guy's the easiest opponent. As you go up towards the left side, the opponents get harder and harder. よし、始めようぜ。大魔女の真剣勝負。さあさあ、皆さんお待ちかね。こいつはハズキリオ。日本から来たカルティエロで対するはブラジルの元妖兵フリオサンタス。So as you probably know, if you beat these guys, they'll challenge you again. They'll be slightly harder, but the bet increases by another ten dollars. And at this stage, it's pretty easy to beat them, so you might as well just keep beating this guy. And then, after I exhaust this man, I move on to the Mexican guy again. There we go! $500. Lickety split. So you might notice that I've limited myself on these two first opponents of the arm wrestling area. I don't really go anywhere near the other end because they are just really hard. As you go up, the difficulty increases by quite a substantial amount, and the guy at the very end, well, he'll just break your arm. I wouldn't even bother. The important thing is, we have $500, which means we can challenge our first opponent, Rod Stunt.
あ,あ腹をまあ墓穴に直行しねえよ頑張りな And yeah, the Phoenix building pretty much just houses the street fighting arena that Rod Stunt hangs out at. But there is something else of great importance here in the Phoenix building. Co That's right, it's Afterburner 2! The arcade cabinet housed upon this great pedestal with holy light shining upon it, as if it were a gift from the gods. I was surprised the choir didn't start playing the moment we set eyes upon this glorious machine. Might as well give it a go before he beats up Rod Stunts. Let's play Afterburner 2. Okay, welcome to Afterburner 2. There's not really a whole lot to explain about this game, in fact you're pretty much being shown how to play right now. You point at enemy ships, you lock on, you shoot missiles, and you fire machine guns, and dodge missiles, and that's about it. And there's your controls, the joystick, trigger, and missiles, that's it. Get ready. Oh, okay, it's a bit different because they're playing on the Dreamcast, and uh... Yeah. Um, yeah, you just use the analog stick to uh, move your ship around, so you use the R trigger to shoot your Vulcan cannon, and the Vulcan cannon is good at taking out guys at close range, or people who are stupid enough to fly directly in front of you. Honestly, they all deserve to be shot, quite frankly. But yes, um, the alternative to just using a machine gun, or your main method of attacking, is to lock onto an enemy by moving your cursor over it, and then you press the missile button and you fire a homing missile, Try and lock onto this guy, but it didn't work, so never mind, we'll just dodge the missile. And there you go, that's pretty much the game. That's all you really need to know. You can also use the L trigger to activate your afterburners, and that makes you go super fast, although that also makes it harder to see incoming obstacles and um, missiles, so uh, I don't really use the afterburner all that much. For the most part, it's just a matter of shooting things and dodging missiles. Now, the other thing you have to be careful of is um, when enemies fire missiles at you, um, sometimes it can be a, bit, a little bit confusing because when you fire your missiles you notice there's a lot of smoke trails. And that's all very impressive graphically, but sometimes it can be a little bit confusing when you're trying to figure out where the missiles are coming from if an enemy is shooting at you with missiles. Like there, like an enemy shot a missile at me, but you can really tell, could you? Sometimes it gets a little bit confusing, you just have to know when an enemy is about to shoot. Generally the idea is that enemies appear on screen, they're a tiny pixel off in the distance, and once they become closer in a certain distance they'll just fire their missiles and you just have to dodge before it hits you. And every few stages you get to reload your missiles, I think they give you 50 at a time, so you have to make sure to not use more than 50 missiles before the next time you reload, which I think is like every other stage or so. Whoops, I got hit! Yep, yeah, one hit and you're dead, and that uses up one of my four lives. So, uh, gotta be careful. You'll notice that every now and again I do a barrel roll. That happens when you move the joystick from left to right really quickly. Um, and that's mainly used for dodging missiles, or when you're being chased by missiles, which happens in the more later levels. famous Afterburner 2 theme song playing, which actually sounds a little bit like the Corneria theme from the original Star Fox game. Let's rock, baby! When you first play this game, it might be a little bit disorientating. In fact, I used to call this uh, Motion Sickness the video game, simply because of the way the camera kind of twists and turns every time you turn the, uh, the jet. And sometimes you can inadvertently do a barrel roll if you're trying to turn quickly and then that just ends up flipping the entire camera around and you're like, whoa, what's happening? But hey, you get used to it, you learn how to control the ship, and you learn to dodge things well, which clearly I'm not doing since I'm on my last life. Well, actually, two lives, that counts as two.
Alright, we made it to stage 5, but don't get cocky, things are gonna get harder. And that's stage 5 done! We made it. Okay, so we're into stage 6 now. In case you're wondering, the plane we're flying right now is the F-14 Tomcat. First deployed in the US Navy aboard the USS Enterprise uh, in 1974. And it was used in the US Navy up until 2006, where it was replaced by the Super Hornet. The F-14 Tomcat was designed for super speed and air superiority and naval interception. It has a two-person cockpit. Uh, we have a co-pilot in here right now. All he seems to do is yell fire whenever we lock onto something. Uh-oh, we're being chased. Evasive maneuvers. Activate afterburners. Gotta go fast! Interesting thing, uh, the afterburners was only a feature in Afterburner 2. In the first Afterburner game you could not use your afterburners, which I guess is kind of strange when you think about it. No, no! Uncle Andrew! Oh, we got another life, okay. I guess we hit the 3 million point mark and that gives us one extra life, so that's good. Yeah, as you can see, the game's difficulty's ramped up quite a bit. We've got guys chasing us, we've got missiles all over the place. I don't even know what the hell's going on. I'm just trying not to die. I'm just maybe pressing the A button every time I hear the guy say fire. Jesus, look how many missiles there are. How are you supposed to dodge those? Oh, well. That was a good run, I guess. Considering I haven't really played this in a while. Just missed the bonus stage, unfortunately. Oh, well. I'll just put my name in as how, as in how was I supposed to dodge all those missiles? I suppose if this was the actual arcade version, they would let you put in more coins for extra credits, but... Well, they don't really let you do that in Shenmue. But yeah, that's Afterburner 2. Fun, frantic, explodey action. What more could you ask for? Well, aside from me being better at the game, but hey, when do you watch me to be good at video games? And unfortunately we didn't get the high score, which I think is over, what, 10 million points? And that means no afterburner figure for us. Because that's our prize if you get top score, just like with the outrun fi uh, cabinet. あの、何か妖怪、兄ちゃん。ストリートファイトができるところを探してるんですが、闘技場なら地下4階だよ。地下4階ですね。well, I don't know about you, but that blood-pumping adrenaline action of Afterburner 2 is enough to get me super psyched for this next Street Fighter bout! Ryo Hazuki vs. Rod Stunt in the ultimate showdown between two mighty warriors! Who will emerge on top? Let's find out!
So this guy, Rod Stunt, uh, he can be a pretty tough opponent. In fact, all of these street fighters we have to fight to impress the scout, they're all pretty hard. Having said that, none of them are as hard as Izumi. She is just, she is still probably the hardest enemy of the game. But these guys are pretty tough too. In fact, this guy took me a couple of tries. The problem is his moves do a lot of damage. So you have to be careful. You have to make sure to, to defend and, and parry at the right times, which is a lot harder than it looks, honestly. Or maybe I'm just saying that to make myself look less terrible. But yeah, I'm not doing too well at the moment. Uh, looks like I've lost this round. Or have I? Shadow step! Followed by machine gun fist! Haha! -ha. Victory snatched from the jaws of defeat! That was quite a stunt I pulled off there! Rod stunt, that is! So we're on to round two now. We need two wins in order to win the match. It's first to two wins, just like a normal fighting game, I guess. And there's a ring out system, as you saw, which is very reminiscent of Virtual Fighter. Which I guess makes sense, considering the entire fight system is based off of that game. Oh, I didn't even mean to do that. Oh well, can't complain. Ryu Hazuki is the victor! So the good thing is that when you win the fight against Rod Stunt, you win a thousand dollars, which means you don't have to grind more money to fight the next opponent, who is Rod Stunt. And if you remember, he needs one thousand dollars in order to challenge him for a fight. If you lose the fight against Rod Stunt, um, you don't have to like pay more money to challenge him again. The game just lets you retry straight away, so no worries there. Before we fight our next opponent, it's time for a little bit of refreshment. Let's go get that classic Coke. Oh, another winning can. You're on a roll. I'm pretty sure I already have this one. Yawn. Who cares? Let's get our drink. Ah, this carbonated sugary drink should give us the energy we need to prepare for the next battle. Exciting Street Fighter action! Good. Ah, delicious. Okay, on to the Blue Dragon Garden, which is actually right next to the drinks machine. Over here. Ha! <laughs> If there's one thing Ryo Hazuki has, it's plenty of luck. We just got a winning can from the drinks machine after all. And let's not forget our track record at the duck races. Not that we need it, of course, because Ryo Hazuki is a master of karate. We can beat this loser no problem. The Blue Dragon Garden actually seems more like an old Roman Colosseum, which seems a little bit out of place here in Hong Kong, but I don't know, I be just, I'm just nitpicking.
Tao chứ Sâu xa Quyết cư mùa You know, I never noticed before that Greg Moore has like this butterfly pattern on his leather vest. It's kind of an interesting touch, I guess. I just didn't expect him to have it because he seems kind of like an like an American biker guy, and I wouldn't think those guys are into butterflies. But hey, what do I know? That doesn't matter now. The important thing is that the fight locale has been chosen, and we got two supreme fighters lined up. This is gonna be one hell of a show. ま、おい、ここにいるぜ。お、兄さん、挑戦するかい。やめとけ。お前じゃ話にならん。俺こっちのセリフだ。てめえみてえな間抜けに負けるわけねえだろ。やるんだな。よし、話は決まった。ま、頑張んな。おい。ね。お。これだろうぜ。あいつ。来い、こそ。仕方ない。容赦はしないぞ。Wait, oh, is that how it works? You challenge them to a fight and then you shove someone else into the ring? Ah, uh, whatever. Go! Elbow assault, go! Machine gun fist, go! So Greg Moore is a wrestler type guy. You need to watch out for his throw moves. No thanks, I got no time for hugs. Jay, you just want to keep your finger on the guard button because you want to be able to tick out of those throws. Especially this one. I got lucky there. Normally that throws you straight out of the arena. Instant ring out. <laughs> Stop throwing me! Alright, let's see how you like being thrown. Oh, that didn't really work as planned. Now, if you're really having trouble fighting these street fighters, then uh, there is a safe strategy you can use for most of these guys, and that's basically to use the three-punch combo. The basic punch is the fastest move, and it's the easiest move to pull off, so if you just focus on like maybe dodging every now and again and then mashing the punch button, you'll usually come out on top. But hey, that's boring. It's much more interesting for a tornado kick. I don't know mean to do that. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it seems a little bit strange what determines a ring out and what doesn't. Like, in this bit, I clearly throw the guy off the ring in this direction, but there's a barrier that kind of stops him from going too far. I don't know. I'm sure there's some weird logic game follows to determine whether or not something, like, is a ring out or not. Yes, this is the final round. It all comes down to this. Oh, no, you don't. Not falling for that again. Machine gun fist! Looks like this fight's as good as mine. Oh, I, well, I wasn't expecting it to end like that, but okay. Ryo Hazuki wins!
じゃあ次行くぞくっそレンてめえのおかげで大損だ俺は勝ったわ<笑>からねえやつだなてめえが勝つから俺様が大損したんだお前っていうことはうるせえ少し黙ったろあいつ